You are listening to the Pilgrim on the 405 with Will Christ. Join him as he and his guests discover how businesses thrive in California. Well, welcome to the Pilgrim on the 405. And as we move up and down the 405, we always come up with great ideas and great things to help uh, businesses in Southern California thrive. And one of the people we have today is an excellent, excellent advisor to small and medium-sized businesses. This is John Gonzalez, the uh, one of the founders and tax partners from Gonzalez CPA. So welcome to the Poro 5, John. Oh, thank you, Will. Thank you for having me. So tell me, tell us a little bit about uh, how you got started in this CPA tax business. Well, interesting. Uh, my parents had their tax returns prepared when I was a kid. Uh, for really incorrect to the point that they wound up owing quite a bit of money. I still remember as a kid uh, us driving down to the Internal Revenue Service and my dad making his $100 payment every month, and it it really impacted our our personal life. And uh, growing up the ranks, I, I, I was lucky enough, blessed enough, to know that I wanted to be a CPA, and, and specifically in tax, which is really interesting. Uh, a lot of my friends didn't know what they wanted to do until leaving college. I knew what I wanted to do right out of high school. Wow. So you, you really have a dream come true. I certainly do. I, I love every day. So t- talk to me about what. where did this passion come from for helping small to medium-sized businesses? Well, I think it all has to do with family. Um, my family has always been an employee of others, and having a business of, of our own between my brother and I has helped us realize quite a bit of financial dreams and and, uh, and freedoms, uh, giving me the opportunity to do the things that I want to do on a daily basis, not only for business purposes, but also family. Well, so family is uh, right at the heart of what you have in your business. What other core values do you have for Gonzalez CPA? Well, it's within those same boundaries that uh, my core values are uh, knowledge, integrity because of the, the type of work that we do, and wisdom, uh, wisdom to do the things that, that are right for not only uh, our, uh, our clients, our employees, but our community in general. So tell me about your clients. Uh, what, what size clients do you work with? Well, our average client is right around a uh, million dollars in gross sales. But that says so much because we have clients that uh, with smaller margins, clients with uh, larger margins such as uh, surf state transactions. It's uh, it's been my cup of tea for, for time. So tell the size uh, in terms of employees. How many? What, what's uh, your sweet spot in terms of employee? Sweet spot is between five and ten employees. But we do have clients that have over mm-hmm. uh, This gives us great latitude in, in the uh, tax strategies that we're able to implement. Now, as you work with clients uh, around their finances and taxes, what would you say the greatest barrier is to success? Well, the greatest barrier is resources. Uh, for the most part, they have their passion in doing what they uh, do. Uh, the margins are good. But bringing in more um, money, more resources in order to do what they want to do, that, that's, that's one of the heaviest barriers. So if they had more money, they would be freer? Is, do you think that's what it is? No, I don't think so. It's, uh, it's not just money, but it's the resources of manpower. The oh, this is the biggest one. The the right professionals that can help them move to the next level. So, is it getting the right people? Is it getting more people? Is it having a, a system for how to use those people? It's uh, it's right in the middle of between the right people and the system mm-hmm. in order to get those people to help you do what you want to do. So you, you you get fairly involved with the companies that you're clients, right? Yeah, quite intimate. Quite and, intimate and so tell them. me a little bit about uh, the problems that you have seen in terms of systems or in terms of people. I think it's the lack of a system. Oh. Yes, absolutely. There's a uh, – call it running like a chicken with its head cut off. So – why, why do you think that's true, the lack of a system for running a business? Well, we're not taught a system in school. We're not taught a system in, what would you call it, hard, uh, school of hard knocks as well. Mm-hmm. We're taught how to sell something. We're taught how to run our 
uh, the actual product, uh, completing the product, and so on and so forth. Gosh, e- even in my background, we're taught how to uh, how to deal with tax strategies, how to prepare tax returns, things of that nature. But we're not really taught a system as to how we can implement those ideas. Their system. Well, I, I think it's trial and error mm. that they get their systems. That's a pretty expensive way to learn. I would say so. Yeah. And I think that a, a whole lot of clients that I've come across over the years have spent quite a bit of money, uh, resources, and here's the biggest one, time, hmm. of uh, having to do things the wrong way and realizing that they're doing it the wrong way, and more importantly, changing the way that they do things to do things better. Do you, do you find that uh, many of the senior leaders – uh, in the companies that you work with are are overworked? They are. I, I find in my niche of, call it, between $1 million and $5 million of sales that the owner does everything. They wear all the hats at the same time. Hmm. That's got to be exhausting. It certainly is. It, and it probably also limits the amount of growth that they can see. It, it, that's absolutely correct. Uh, if you're only one person, there's really only 24 hours in a day, and hopefully we'll we'll spend a little bit of time sleeping, and the rest is doing work. And sometimes we don't get to work on our business. Uh-huh. What, what? Tell me about working on your business. Well, uh, we, as an example, we know how to uh, make widgets, and we know how to make the widgets very very nicely. But how do we know if those widgets are the one, right ones to sell? How do we know if the margins are right? How do we know if we're making money after running around uh, for such a long time? So being being able to look at your business from a little distance rather than being in the business. That's right. And so do many of your clients do that right now? Without direction, not very much. Yeah. Do you think they're open to, to seeing the business in a different way? Well, let me give you an example. Uh, from uh, What we do for our clients is not only do we prepare tax returns, which I think that's maybe 10% of what we do, but 90% is tax strategies and, and coming up with ideas on how they can do things better. I find it that my brand new clients find it very difficult to set up an appointment with me. Will, we're talking about one hour in the entire year to figure out strategies and, and to figure what is best for my company and because everything else is much more important than that. It, it, is it because they don't want to, they're uncomfortable, or what do you think the reason is? You know what? I don't think they find that the that is as important as making one more widget hmm. until we start going over the strategies and they realize that that one hour can be worth anywhere between 15 and 20% of their business. Hmm. Hmm. So how many clients do you think you have with company uh, how many companies do you have that you know that have uh, employees between 10 and 250 I would say in the neighborhoods of 150 to 200 clients that have really between those kind of uh, numbers and and if they were able to learn a system for how to run their business and and what do you think they could do what what do you think would be the results of that well, I think that they would uh, multiply the time, i.e., the resource, by the amount of people that they have. Mm-hmm. And you know, very important, they would wind up realizing that it's not just them, mm. that they can delegate some of these uh, pieces of work to others to grow their business. And the effect on them would be they would have less time that they would have to be doing, less stress. What do you think the effect would be on the people they delegated it to? Well, they would grow as individuals. Hmm. They would start realizing some of their passions instead of like the rest of my buddies in college that didn't know what they wanted to do. Now they'll have a purpose. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I think one of the the biggest benefits that, that I get is by helping my employees grow. Really? Tell me a little bit more about that, helping your your employees grow. Yeah. I think at the very beginning of our practice, I, uh, I bought into the idea that if I gave all of the secrets to my employees, that the, one day that they would leave me and they would start their own practice. And 
as I started getting busy and busy, I realized that that wasn't the case. And the more I gave to my employees, the better I felt about my business. And did some leave me? Yes, they certainly did. But I, I am very happy uh, with their, uh, their business growth and what they've done. And at the same time, it's elevated our business to, gosh, many more levels than what I expected it ever to be. So your fear about sharing your secret sauce with your employees and allowing them to grow, how did, how did you deal with that fear? Did you just jump in and do it, or what happened? Well, like most CPAs, we drag our feet, <laughs> our feet when when it doesn't quite make all that sense, that much sense. But uh, Will, it was slow. It was slow for me to, to give some of that uh, that secret sauce or how I do things to my employees. But as I saw it working better and better, it it, uh, it sped things up faster and faster. Well, now. Uh, you've gone through a little transformation in terms of how you're spending your time at work, right? Oh, absolutely. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, again, well, I'll, I'll make it as if as if it's a fixture that all CPAs do the same thing, uh, which we sort of do. Uh, we work our 14, 15 hours a day during tax season, and sometimes off, off season we've got quite a bit of work to do. And uh, one of my goals has been to work four days out of the week. And oh, did I drag my feet to work those four days a week? And finally, I, I decided to just take the Friday off. And I realized how much work I could get done in those four days, but more importantly, how much my family needed and wanted me on that fifth day and how much time I was able to spend with my parents and my kids and my wife uh, that now it's it, it's what I want to do all the time. Mm-hmm. And by uh, cutting that one day off from the things that I normally do at work, I was pushed into giving that responsibility to the rest of my employees. And looking back at this, Will, they're growing because of it. I was keeping them from growing. Wow. So you were overworking from what you wanted to be doing, and they were uh, being limited to what they could take on. That's right. What an interesting, what an interesting exchange there. You're freed up for all of Friday, and they have more experience and, and a bigger time to, to grow. That's right. That is amazing. I wonder, I wonder how many companies would appreciate just that change. Well, I've been so excited about what's, what's happened that everyone who walks through my, uh, my office gets this story. Hmm. And, of course, I expect, just the way that I did, that they would drag their feet as well. Right. But the more that we talk, the more they ask me, well, John, did it really work? And were they able to take care of this job? And, yeah, they're able to take, care, take on much more than what I ever expected. So, so the, this, this thing that I've observed called, um, you know, what I, what I call the, the owner-centric business, where the owner is the one who does everything. And, and if, if they get to the place where they start hiring people, they're really hiring assistants to the owner. That's right. And, and then what I've observed is every day or every couple of days, every one of those assistants has to line up outside the uh, owner's office door and say, what do I do today? Well, how do you want to solve this problem? What's next? That's right. And when you're not there, nothing happens. Ah, that's another one. Overwork and then total dependence upon you. So if for some reason you either have to get away or you choose to get away, then nothing happens. That's right. I remember some tax seasons uh, where I had to take a day off. In my mind, I thought nothing's going to happen that day. Well, it didn't happen. Nothing did happen, but that's because I was standing right in front of the door and not letting things happen. Ah. And so what you've done is you've taken the time and you have have encouraged your employees to grow. Now, now I presume that they don't make everything perfect the first week. Oh, no, they don't. There's mistakes. Right. Yeah. But that's growth. Absolutely. To learn, to take, uh, because uh, to, to my way of thinking, the way that we learn is through our failures. Oh, I certainly learned a lot from my failures. Yes, <laughs> me too, me too. And, and so two things so far we've discovered that when we have a, a system for growing uh, our business, 
and uh, and 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 learning how to uh, how to encourage to share with employees this responsibility for running the business. That number one, it can create free time for the owner, the founder, the the president, uh, and also it it ensures that even though the, they're not present, that things go on. That's right. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So what what else have you discovered? Well, uh, that uh, specifically with my clients, uh, they they want to grow their companies, and they uh, don't find the way to grow their companies, and they get comfortable at a, spe- a specific point. Mm-hmm. And uh, from my experience, if you're not growing the company, the company's actually dying. Mm-hmm. And without new sales, new systems, um, and bringing in just more uh, technology into our, our organizations, mm-hmm. we're doing a disservice to not only ourselves, but our staff as well. Uh-huh. Now, does, to your way of thinking, does, does business contribute to uh, community life, to uh, you know, the quality of life in, say, Orange County? Well, it's uh, it's like one of those uh, Disney cartoons. It's it's the circle of life mm. that everything is connected. Our communities are connected to not only the our call it uh, our customers that are employees, our customers that are self employed, the major companies, corporations, things of that nature. That we're all connected in one way or the other, uh, and what we do in our community to help others will come back to us in many different ways. Mm-hmm. The way that we find that, for example, a lot of CPAs will, will charge on an hourly basis. Uh, we like to make sure that our clients are, are taken care of mm-hmm. because we know that uh, the reputation that we, uh, that we instill by helping those clients comes back to us in many ways. And our community benefits from that by having uh, those members in our community that, that have that thought. Well, that's an interesting. It's an interesting, very powerful idea. I want to come back to that. Can you stick around through the break, and we'll come back and talk a little bit more about the relationship of business to community. So, stick around. Uh, listen to a little bit of the uh, of some what some of the folks who are supporting the Pilgrim on the four hundred five, and we'll be right back with John Gonzalez from Gonzalez CPA. Hi, time for another tip from Sandler Sales Institute. Prospects want your information and expertise. Prospects have been trained by the vast majority of salespeople to feel entitled to your valuable information. Most salespeople are comfortable in coughing up their expertise for free. However, when the orders don't come and the prospect has shopped your information to your competitor, the salesperson has fallen victim to unpaid consulting. Before giving information, Ask good questions. What does the prospect want? What is the urgency? What are the consequences of not buying anything? What is the decision-making process? Eliminate unpaid consulting. This has been another Sandler Sales Institute tip. Imagine what it would feel like to lose everything. Your job, your home, your family, your dignity. This has happened to thousands of the men, women, veterans, and young adults we serve at Working Wardrobes. What do we do to help? We provide career development services, life skills workshops, job skills training. We provide the perfect interview outfit, and we get clients placed in jobs. Call Working Wardrobes, 714-210-2460. Donate, volunteer, invest, hire. All right, back to Will and his guest. Well, welcome back to the Pilgrim on the 405, where we're having a great conversation with John Gonzalez of Gonzalez CPA. And we've been talking about the value of an operating system for a business. And and that's that's not just the seat of the pants. That's just not let's do what's what happens next. Let's have an operating system where we understand how we are, are, are creating our vision, how we are really clear about what we're going to do, how we're going to get to that vision, when we're going to get there, and why we're going to get there. 
And so we're, we've begun to talk about the relationship of business to community. So, John, have you seen businesses that make significant contributions to the community because they are doing well? Absolutely. I, well, the, the, the easy one to, to see is that uh, many of my clients, uh, the top echelon of, the, of my clients, give actual money to uh, charitable organizations. Uh, around the the neighborhood, one of them is the Cystic Fibrosis uh, Foundation, and uh, others are Cure for for Cancer and and Cruise for Cancer and so on, uh, Cruise for a Cure. Uh, so there there is those uh, sort of uh, payments that are given, but I think that uh, commun- or companies are reaching out to the community by. Uh, by teaching them uh, these particular skills that are necessary to, to be uh, fully employed, skills of, uh, of organization, skills of uh, technical skills as well. So give me an example. Can you tell me a story about uh, a company that's doing that? Yeah. For, uh, for example, what we used to do as Gonzalez CPA, uh, and we, we do it a little bit less just because we're so busy these days, but we used to have a an educational seminar once a quarter where it was a full eight-hour course on not only tax strategies and uh, and how to do accounting and things of that nature, but more importantly, how to start your company. From a regulatory perspective, what are the things that are going to be in front of you that uh, will cause you to, uh, to close your company down, and what are the things that, that will help you strive in your company? All right. And did you see companies getting started because of that? Oh, there, there are companies that are started every day. Yes. Now, the issue with uh, the companies that start every day is that they just don't know which step to take next. And if that's the case, then the, the flame uh, dwindles down, and now we're looking for a job again. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But if you have a great idea and you have the right uh, counseling, then that company grows to the next spot or the next level. And that next level could be hiring your, your first assistant or hiring the, uh, the employees that will take care of uh, building your business. Mm-hmm. Um, those are the things that, that I think that a good professional uh, as a CPA, as a consultant, can bring our clients up to the next level. Well, uh, this is an interesting thing uh, that comes across, uh, that pops up in my head is, as a CPA and a tax consultant, you are there to minimize the taxes that a company has to pay, right? Well, that's right. Now, as a company grows, is there fair share to pay more taxes as they grow? Well, the, the way that our tax code is written, we are incentivized to do certain things for our country in general and more locally here in our state and localities. But by spending more money in infrastructure, spending more money in equipment, we are reducing our tax burden. But at the same time, uh, the government is helping us increase or or grow our business. One of those things that, that guests ask to me all the time, John, is there anything else I can do to reduce my tax burden? And some of those will come with, well, can we kind of fudge this a little bit and so on and so forth? And and my uh, response to that is that my job is to not only reduce your tax burden, but to grow your company. Because if I was to tax you at the very highest tax rate on making millions of dollars, that is far different, uh, different from having only $100,000 in income and your taxes are $1,000. Mm-hmm. I think a whole lot of my clients would go towards having the higher tax rates with a higher income than not very much income at the end of the day. So one of the one of the things that I have heard from time to time is is the response when people say, oh my goodness, look how huge this tax bill is. I have heard some people say, yes, but look how big your revenue is. And, and, and that in fact, a larger tax bill very often is because you've been successful. Yes, it has. And if, when we meet with brand new clients, it, it sometimes is the issue of not having direction and having uh, not uh, the right ideas uh, for ta- tax strategies. 
for example, uh, your basic business, if, if they're not investing into their future in, in infrastructure, sure, their tax bill is going to be at the highest rate. And some of these highest rates now are 52%. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, uh, again, that, that comfort stage, if you're comfortable with paying the 52%, well, great. The, I, I think that's, that's good for our government. But if we keep growing, if we keep investing into our future and in infrastructure, our tax rates are going to be lower. We're going to be able to invest into our future a bit more. Yes, we'll pay some taxes at some point, but while we're growing our companies, our tax rates are lower. So, in, in effect, there's an incentive to build this this business, at, which creates more jobs. That's right, and and it creates more opportunity to to share that with. Uh, organizations in the community. So we really have a stronger community by growing business. We certainly do. And think about it this way. We're not only helping our communities grow, but we're teaching our employees how to do what we do. Mm-hmm. This makes for a great company. This is more of a partnership than it is a, a corporation setting. Mm-hmm. This is what we're setting up for our clients. Now, uh, you and I have been working together on uh, EOS. So talk a little bit about what what EOS, maybe what EOS, uh, the entrepreneurial operating system, as it's been implemented at uh, Gonzalez CPA, uh, maybe a little bit about what it's done for you and what it could be do- doing for other companies. Right. Well, EOS has helped us quite a bit. And w- the way that I used to manage my business is off of lists. I had a, a certain amount of clients that came in, brought me all of their documentation for, to prepare a tax return, and I'd go right off the list. But that was me. That was me going off the list. My staff didn't know what was on that list other than when I gave them that list. What we do now is we meet on a uh, weekly basis. On Mondays, we spend, gosh, we spend a good almost two, three hours going over what we intend to to, uh, accomplish over the, the rest of the week. But not from a list perspective. It's more from a responsibilities perspective where my staff is responsible for a certain chunk of what I was responsible for um, before. Now they can put in their full 40 hours into working on that project instead of me working 40 or 80 hours on all sorts of things and not becoming uh, very strong at any of those. So has has this helped you clarify the values that you have, what, what the reason that you're in business? Oh, that's right. So, again, we were talking about working in the business as opposed to uh, on the business. Uh, I was working in the business, and I was making sure that all those tax returns were prepared and done and clients were happy. Now I'm looking at it from a perspective of how do I make sure that my employees are taking care of my clients? And now I have more time to, to spend with my clients and asking them, how are we doing? Is there anything that we can do better for you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is a, 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 a shift of, of my thought, that's for sure. So in a sense, you have delegated a lot of responsibilities and elevated yourself to a different level. That's right. That's a perfect way to say that. Now, if you had to guess, which is it that you enjoy doing most? Uh, completing the tax returns or speaking with your clients, if you had to choose? Well, Will, if you would have asked me that five years ago, I would have said, preparing the tax returns. But that's not the truth. The truth is that I enjoy, I get a kick out of uh, helping clients grow. When my clients are growing their companies and reach back to me and uh, give me thanks for the the guidance that I've given them over the years that has uh, increased their wealth, but more importantly, given them more time for their family, that's that is a great payment for me. So, so in in effect, uh, Dan Sullivan, uh, you know, uh, a coach from uh, Canada, would say you have you begun to use your unique ability. That's right. To uh, assist uh, companies in looking at how they can improve what they're doing, not simply to account for what they're doing. Yeah. So that that is taking the mentality from your basic accountant to now a counselor. Uh huh. So an advisor. Uh, an advisor. And, and it seems to me, now, now correct me if I'm, I'm wrong, John, but when I hear about what seems to be the next agenda on the Congress's list of things to be done, uh, that tax reform is a biggie. It certainly is. So we've heard quite a bit of uh, tax reform. Uh, Will, so we, we've been hearing that since 1984. Do you think there's a chance that it might get further than conversation this time? I think that we're going to discuss that quite a bit in the next two to three months here. 
Uh, and I think that, honestly, the tax code is going to wind up getting more complicated. More complicated rather That's than simpler. That's right. Remember, I, I said that the tax code is used to incentivize mm. those businesses to do something mm. or individuals. For, for example, in the mortgage industry, uh, we were able to uh, uh, write off our mortgages. That means government wants us to own a home. Um, I think that as we discuss more and more how to simplify our, our tax code, we're going to wind up uh, realizing more pages in the tax code. Mm. And more pages m- means more explanation, means more complications. Oh, my goodness. Well, I, I was – maybe I was uh, uh, living under the uh, – the uh, belief that I guess it's wrong belief now that I hear from you, but that belief that maybe we're going to get to get to be able to have uh, you know contributions and mortgages uh, are are only deductions, which means that we could literally make our tax return on the back of a postcard. But it doesn't sound like that's going to happen. I don't think that's going to happen. But we already have a very simple uh, tax return that's called a 1040 EZ. For those individuals that make an under a certain dollar amount and have no other uh, complex uh, tax issues, but we're always going to have the, in, in my personal opinion, uh, uh, we're always going to have some sort of a complexity to our, our tax returns. So there will be a job for CPAs. <laughs> I think there will be. Good. Okay. But now, now back into this uh, this notion of advising companies. What what would be the top three things? that you would have uh, an advice for companies in Southern California? Well, one of them is, is structuring their organization, uh, making sure that they have the right entity for the right kind of business that they're dealing with. Uh, number two, you, you hit the nail on the head, systems. We tend to work on uh, inside of our business and not on that, and there's got to be a way for us to uh, – figure a way to, to grow our companies uh, with the help of others. And then uh, finally, there's there's the tax strategies of things. The way that we do things will realize a, a lower tax bill. And, Will, our tax bill is huge. For a lot of my clients, it's at 50%. One little change on the tax strategy makes a very big impact, more so than making another widget. So give me some ideas about tax strategies. Well, the, the, the tools of our trade are, one, we have uh, tax deferrals. That means that if we can spend some money now and put that money into the future, we won't pay taxes on it now, but we'll be realizing some tax, tax effect later on. Mm-hmm. Those are your retirement accounts, your IRAs, your 401k plans, your defined benefit programs, things of that nature. Uh, then we have the incentive type of deductions, our costs, such as uh, purchasing equipment that will hopefully increase our business. And I don't mean uh, going out and buying a, a brand new vehicle that you don't need in the business. But those give us great write-offs that, uh, that will, will, re- will reduce our tax burden. Uh, between those two deductions, I would rather have deferrals than I would actual expenses because I can actually feel and touch that money down the road. Okay. Now, um, talk a little bit about uh, the right entity, the structure. Right. So a lot of businesses start off as a sole proprietorship, meaning that uh, they'll, uh, they own the, the business, they have the full control over the business, but for tax purposes, they're taxed at the highest rates. They're taxed at the individual rates, and also they'll wind up having to pay Social Security and Medicare called self-employment tax. <clears throat> that can get us clearly to the 65 to 70 percent tax rate if we're not doing the right thing. We also have different entity structures such as corporations. The corporations are broken up into either an S corporation or a C corporation, and the S and the C are subchapters in the tax code. This is not going to get easy as we go forward, that's for sure. The S corporation is a flow-through entity which will pay taxes at the individual rate. The C corporation pays taxes both at the corporate rate and also the individual rate. If we don't work the C corporation right, we could get at 70% tax rates. Mm. Mm. And the S corporation can reduce, not eliminate, can reduce some of the Social Security, Medicare, or self-employment tax burden. Mm-hmm. The LLCs, which are somewhat brand new, they're, they've started in 1991 and more uh, recently here in California in 1994, is a hybrid between a sole proprietorship, a partnership, and a corporation. 
takes all the goodies and leaves all the bad things behind. For legal purposes, the LLC is more of a stronghold than a corporation is. But for tax purposes, it's a chameleon. We can either uh, tax you as a C corporation, sole proprietorship, or an S corporation, which would give us the, the best tax benefits. So there's quite a bit of structure changes, and I think that having a discussion with your tax professional or your CPA would be very advantageous here. Well, that's interesting. I'm, uh, I've been in LLC since I started my company, and I, I didn't realize I was at the uh, cutting edge. Uh, <laughs> I started in 1998, and... Uh, I created an LLC and then later uh, began to be taxed as a as an S corp. Um, but uh, 1994, that's 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 pretty cutting edge you in 1998. Edge. My goodness, you're one year off from the very beginning. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. So so um, where do people? How do people get in touch with you? What would be a, a way of uh, if someone said, uh, "Gee, I'd like to talk to I'd like to talk to John." What would they do? Well, uh, the first thing is to uh, to send me an email. Uh, my email address is john at gonzalezcpa.com. And uh, the other way is also to set up an appointment with me. Uh, that's calling my, my great staff there at the office and having a, uh, a, a time to, to sit down. I'd love to go over old tax returns with you and, and uh, start a strategy for you. Uh, do they have to uh, pay before they come in? My consultations, uh, my initial consultation is always free. Mm-hmm. And that adds a lot of goodies there that, that w- you can take home. Um, but more importantly, that starts our relationship, and from there we can uh, start planning the rest of the future of your business. So, telephone number? Telephone number is area code 949-333-0161. So, uh, tell me, uh, give me a success story in the last year, a company that you've really, you've really seen make the changes that have uh, had huge impacts on itself and maybe the community. Well, I remember one of our clients that wanted to uh, to start a business on his own and realized later on that his em- employer was closing the business down. And he decided to take whatever uh, the uh, old owner had and buy it in order to grow his company. That organization had $100,000 in gross sales at that point. By the systems that Hugo and I put together uh, for him back then, he is now at about $14 million in gross sales, and he employs all of his kids. His kids are now making in excess of $150,000 each, and they're all contributing with a system to the company itself. Wow. It's not just the owner. It's him and his kids and the employees that have moved up through the ranks. He's got uh, 35 employees now. 35 employees? And how long ago? How long did it take? Oh, this, this is about eight years. Eight years. Not too long. Yeah. From a hundred thousand to what it is now, amazing, amazing. So, when when people come to you, is it that, that generally is it that they are they have a new idea for a product or they have a new idea for service? Uh, what what do you find in terms of entrepreneurship today, innovation? Well, uh, the uh, the easy pickings, as, as so to speak, are those clients that come in and, and uh, want to uh, expand their ideas with us. They know that they need an advisor in their organization to help them move there. But majority of clients are those that I prepare income tax returns for that ask me time and time again, how do I reduce the tax burden? And my answer to them is, no, no, no. How do we grow your business? And those are the ones that uh, that I'm, I'm very proud of mm-hmm. just because we're, we're able to shift their uh, their perspective on business. So let's talk a little bit about growth. This is an interesting idea to me. That we use the word growth, which we also use with plants and trees and and animals and people. Growing businesses is is not the same as that. Uh, it seems to me that's a little unconscious kind of thing that happens. Growing a business is a very conscious decision. Oh, it certainly is. It doesn't happen by mistake. That's for sure. And, and uh, uh, helping people to see that it's not an automatic thing. There's not a, uh, there's not a direct connection between a great idea and a great business. Right. So I think that a, uh, if you had a great business and basic product, that company will be very successful. If you had a great business idea but no business strategy or system in place, 
that's just a good idea and it stays there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it's with hard work and uh, more or less having uh, the the right people uh, to help to grow that help you grow that company in the right way. That's what's really going to come to success, not only to the owner, but also to employees and the community around. Well, one thing that that uh, I have. Uh I've said to companies very often in working with them is that there's that there's a difference in having a clear vision and then having traction. Oh, that's right. Making it work. And and uh, uh, one of the one of the sayings that that uh, that, I, that I think Vern Harnish first came up with was that vision without traction is hallucination. <laughs> that's right. So it's a. Uh I know that with my clientele that that come in every year and they have that great idea but do not want to take uh, the next step in in growing their business in bringing the right uh, professionals and uh, having the right resources to to get that business to the other side there keep coming in every year after year and, and dreaming dreaming and sometimes it can turn into a bad dream yes it can so so uh there's a wonderful book that i'll recommend to uh, listeners called traction by gino wickman and uh you've read it i've read it T- tell us a little bit about what you found in traction well uh what i found attractive is that um it, it struck a chord with a whole lot of things that were going on in our business at that point before reading the book is that we were running around trying to get our work done but not looking at the, the direction of the company itself and how we were going to get to to that next part that we really wanted to go to, uh, getting our, our staff to uh, to become partners, to, to uh, bring in their own clientele. So I think that Traction helped us uh, set up a vision, first of all, uh, set up goals, uh, and identify those things that were in front of us, uh, of what he considers rocks. Uh, and uh, when we're all uh, rowing at, uh, in the same direction, we are significantly faster than the, the other way what we were doing before. Uh huh. Uh huh. Well, I I am I have, I have I believe so much in the book Traction that I've I've bought a bunch of copies, and I am willing to give those to anybody, including your client your clients, anybody that has an interest in in seeing an alternative to this hallucination of having a great vision. But but uh, you know sliding around and, and not being able to really make it happen. Right. So so uh, what again? If someone wants to talk with you or wanted to get a copy of Traction, which I'm going to make available to you, what what would they do? Well, have have them call our office, mm-hmm. and I would love to uh, uh, to take you up on that offer and and. Um, uh, send out a, a book to to whoever would like to. Good. Uh, I I know that it, it took me a week and a half at most to read that just because I couldn't let it down. Uh huh. So that was a, it was a really easy read and very inspirational. So what what is the uh, uh, what's the telephone number at the office? It's uh, area code nine four nine three 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 zero one six one, and you can also email me and, and we'd love to, to to send that out to you. It's uh, John at GonzalezCPA dot com, and that's spelled. J O H N at G O N Z A L E Z C P A dot com. Well, thanks, John. This is this has been a really wonderful time to be with you, and uh, I really appreciate this whole notion of rather than see how we reduce taxes, let's see if we can grow your business. That's right. Excellent. Well, there we are, uh, John Gonzalez from. Uh, Gonzalez CPA with with a wonderful offer for you. Uh, He will be happy to sit down and visit with you to see how he can help your company grow. In addition, he'd he'd be happy to uh, give you a a free copy of Traction by Gino Wickman. And there you have it for the Pilgrim on the 405 as we continue to search through Southern California to find those ideas, thoughts, business practices, uh, behaviors, uh, attitudes, and techniques to help businesses Thrive in California. You've been listening to The Pilgrim on the 405 with Will Christ. To hear more of the program from this podcast, go to www.willchrist.com.